Welcome back to Shane Graphic. Today, we are concentrating on North Carolina, a critical battleground that Donald Trump must secure. Having won the state in both the 2016 and 2020 elections, it is difficult to envision a route to 270 electoral votes for the former president without once again obtaining the Tar Heel State. Among the seven pivotal battleground states on the electoral map, North Carolina is the sole state that Trump successfully retained in 2020, and current polling suggests it continues to be one of his most robust strongholds. That said, it also represents a realistic flip opportunity for Kamala Harris, giving her a rare chance to go on offense while she's busy defending the other toss-up states. At present, Harris possesses a marginal advantage in the overall contest for 270 electoral votes, contingent upon the states favoring either candidate. With merely seven electoral votes distinguishing her from Trump, the seven pivotal battleground states, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Nevada, will be crucial in determining the presidential victor this November. Let us examine the data prior to proceeding with our prediction, beginning with the recent presidential election outcomes in North Carolina. Barack Obama's slim triumph in 2008 constitutes the sole Democratic victory in this region since 1976. Nonetheless, the state has experienced exceedingly narrow outcomes in the past four elections, with margins of under four percentage points on each occasion. Indeed, North Carolina is one of only two states, along with Florida, where this situation has occurred. Trump's margin dropped from 3.7% in 2016 to just 1.3% in 2020. But what's remarkable is that despite the national shift between those elections, North Carolina maintained a nearly identical Republican lean compared to the national popular votes. For context, in 2016, Hillary Clinton won the national pop vote by 2.1 percent, but lost North Carolina by 3.7 percent. In 2020, Trump won North Carolina by 1.3 percent, even though Biden won the popular vote by 4.0 percent. Both outcomes show a 5.8 percent Republican lean. Even further back in 2012, Mitt Romney carried North Carolina by exactly 2 percent, while Barack Obama won the popular vote by 3.9 percent, translating to a 5.9 percent Republican lean. What we can observe that despite shifting national trends in each of these elections, North Carolina's voting pattern has remained remarkably consistent. The Cook Political Report's Partisan Voting Index for North Carolina is R plus 3, meaning that in a neutral national environment where the popular vote is tied, the Republican candidate would be expected to carry North Carolina by around 6 percentage points, or double the PVI. Right now, Harris leads by around 3 to 4 points in the polls, depending on which average you're looking at, which would suggest Trump will hold North Carolina by around 2 to 3 points. Now, as for how the state's trend has compared to the nation since 2016, 2012, and 2000. Again, we see how North Carolina has seen virtually no real trends since 2012. Yet, if we go all the way back to the start of the 21st century, North Carolina has trended 7.5 points more Democratic. That's because while the national popular vote in that race between Al Gore and George Bush was nearly tied, Bush carried North Carolina by 3,013 points, meaning it had leaned about 13 points to the right of the country in 2000. With all that in mind, it makes sense that North Carolina ranks 41st in elasticity, with a score of 0.94. This metric, created by 538, measures how responsive a state is to shifts in the national political environment. In simpler terms, the elasticity score tells us how much a state is expected to move based on changes in national vote share. So if the national popular vote shifts by one point in Trump's favor compared to 2020, we'd expect North Carolina to shift 0.94 points in Trump's favor as well. Essentially, North Carolina is less responsive than the average state to national political swings from one election to the next. 
looking at other recent non-presidential statewide elections for U.S. Senate and Governor, North Carolina has established a pattern of extraordinarily close contests over the last decade. In fact, since 2010, any party has won a statewide election here by more than seven percentage points. That's remarkable. Democrats have managed to win the last two gubernatorial elections, and they're expected to continue that streak this November, with Republican nominee Mark Robinson's campaign facing significant turmoil. On the flip side, Republicans have maintained dominance in U.S. Senate races, having won six consecutive Senate elections in the state. This split dynamic, Democrats controlling the governor's office and Republicans dominating Senate races races, illustrates how North Carolina remains a genuine battleground at both the federal and state levels. Looking ahead to November 2024, the polling data for the head-to-head -head contest between Trump and Harris shows an extremely close race with results consistently within the margin of error. Trump holds a slight edge across all five notable polling averages. Three of the most well-known 538 Decision Desk HQ, The Hill and Real Clear polling have Trump leading by statistical ties, 1.4%, 1.4% again, and then 1.7 respectively. These slim leads suggest that while Trump may be slightly favored, the margins are so tight that a typical polling error could easily swing the outcome in Harris' favor. This assessment is consistent with the ratings from major forecasters. Five of six key forecasters, the Cook Political Report, Sabato's Crystal Ball Split Ticket Decision Desk, and Inside Elections, currently classify North Carolina as a toss-up, is the lone deviant rating the contest as lean R based on their quantitative forecast. Meanwhile, the prediction markets mirror this extremely competitive outlook in North Carolina, reflecting the public sentiment on just how tight the race is. That said, both Polymarket and Kelshi currently give Trump a clear edge in the state. Polymarket estimates Trump's chances of winning at 68%, while Kelshi places him at 69%. Metaculous Market has his odds narrower at just 57%. Finally, let's take a look at North Carolina's demographic profile. Projections based on demographic data alone suggest that if everything else were equal, these factors would give Democrats about a five-point edge. This is largely because North Carolina ranks among the top 20 least racially white states and is also in the top 20 in terms of the share of residents with a college degree. Since white voters, particularly those without a college degree, tend to lean Republican, the state's relatively high diversity and education level provide an advantage for Democrats. Other demographic factors are more neutral. North Carolina ranks close to the middle of the pack in terms of median age and urbanization. Younger and urban voters tend to lean Democratic, while North Carolina's strong religiosity has less of an impact on voting behavior than it does in some other states. Additionally, the state ranks lower in median income, which hasn't shown a strong partisan tilt either way in this context. In our final slide, before moving into the prediction section, let's take a look at the county-level results from North Carolina in the 2020 presidential election. Donald Trump narrowly carried the state, receiving 49.9% of the vote to Biden's 48.6% with raw vote lead of approximately 75,000. The rural-urban divide was even more pronounced in this election than in past cycles. Biden managed to carry eight of North Carolina's ten largest counties and even overperformed Obama's 2008 margin in the six largest counties. Notably, Biden became the first Democrat since 1976 to carry New Hanover County, home of Wilmington. On the other hand, Trump held or even outperformed his 2016 margins in several historically Democratic counties that had voted for Obama twice, but flipped to Trump in 2016, including Robeson, Bladen, Martin, Granville, and Gates counties. The racial divide was also stark. According to Edison exit polls, Trump defeated Biden by 33 points among white voters, 
while Biden secured a massive 85-point lead among black voters and led by 15 points among other minority groups. All right, it's time for the prediction section of this video. Let's fast forward to election night on November 5, 2020. The polls are about to close at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time here in North Carolina, where 16 critical electoral votes are on the line. North Carolina is known for processing ballots relatively quickly, and results will start rolling in soon. We already have a key race alert coming in right now. It's too early to call in North Carolina as the polls close in this crucial battleground state. The Harris campaign made a significant push in the final stretch, aiming to expand the Democratic coalition. And in just a few hours, we'll see whether those efforts have paid off. At the moment, only a few thousand votes have been counted from an estimated 5 million ballots. Donald Trump has jumped out to an early lead with 3,500 votes. To Harris, 1,800. But with such a small fraction of votes counted, we have a long way to go tonight before any clear trend emerges. Stay tuned as we continue tracking this key race. Alrighty, we have another key race alert out of North Carolina. It took a bit longer than usual, but we've just, just received the early and absentee ballot dump, which accounts for more than half of the ballots expected tonight. As anticipated, Kamala Harris has taken a healthy lead among these more Democratic-leaning votes. She currently holds 52.5% of the vote compared to Trump's 45.9%, giving her a lead of about 275,000 votes with an estimated 54% of the total ballots counted. The key question now is whether this early lead will act as a sufficient firewall for Harris as the election day vote starts to come in, likely favoring Trump. This pattern mirrors 2020, where Biden led most of the night before election day votes pulled Trump over the top. We'll see if history repeats itself. Time will. Let's take a look at the county-level returns in North Carolina, with 72% of the estimated vote, now in almost every county across the state, has reported at least partial results. Kamala Harris is still holding a lead with 51% of the vote, compared to Donald Trump's 47.3%. But her lead is continuing to shrink. The margin between them has narrowed to just 144,000 votes. As more Election Day votes roll in, especially from more rural and traditionally Republican areas, we expect this map to gradually fill in with more red, tightening the race even further as the night progresses. We now have around 80% of the estimated vote in from North Carolina, and the gap between the candidates continues to close. Vice President Kamala Harris is holding on to exactly 50% of the votes, while Donald Trump has increased his share to 48.2%. The raw vote margin has shrunk to just 86,000 votes, separating the two. North Carolina's vote tallying has been impressively efficient tonight, and with the race tightening, it will be crucial to see how the remaining votes impact this closely fought contest. Taking another look at the county-level results in North Carolina, with 87% of the vote now reported, the race has tightened to a razor-thin margin. Kamala Harris' early advantage from absentee and early ballots has nearly vanished. She now leads Donald Trump by fewer than 10,000 votes with 49.3% of the vote compared to Trump's 49.1%. Strong returns from conservative rural areas have lifted Trump to within just two-ten of a percentage point and it almost feels inevitable that we'll see him overtake Harris here at any moment. Here we go. Donald Trump has taken his first lead of the night in North Carolina polling, ahead of Kamala Harris by more than 30,000 votes. With 94% of the estimated vote now reported, Trump holds 49.4% of the vote compared to Harris, 48.8%. More than 5 million votes have been counted so far. And at this stage, it seems increasingly likely that a call could come in soon as the remaining votes are unlikely to lean heavily in Harrison favor. 
The race is nearing its final stretch in this critical battleground state. Donald Trump has officially won the state of North Carolina, with EP official projecting that the former president will carry the state's 16 electoral votes. This is a crucial victory for Trump as he navigates his path to 270 electoral votes. The final tally shows Trump leading by 70,000 votes with 49.6% to Harris, 48.3%, a margin nearly identical to the 2020 result in North Carolina. While the national popular vote has slightly shifted in favor of Republicans since 2020, Harris performed relatively well in North Carolina, a state where her appeals as a candidate proved more effective due to its diverse, young, and relatively well-educated population. With this projection, Trump takes the lead in the overall electoral count, now sitting at 235 electoral votes, just 35 shy of the necessary 270. His most efficient path to victory from here includes wins in Georgia and Pennsylvania which would combine for exactly 35 electoral votes and bring him to 270. Meanwhile, Harris' best path remains holding on to the upper Rust Belt trio of Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, all of which will be critical for her chances. That's all for this edition of the State by State series. You can feel free to comment your thoughts and feelings in the comment section below. I appreciate all positive or negative comments. Also, make sure to let me know down there what other 2024 related videos you'd like to see in the future. Shout out to my channel members in the description below. Make sure to subscribe to my channel down below and please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can check out more content from my channel here. And as always, thank you so much for watching.